All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at compound and complex sentences, and so we're feeling pretty confident with them. This is divided into three different sections for today. So our first thing that we have here is that we're looking at independent and dependent clauses. So an independent clause is a group of words that can stand on its own, a complete thought that has a subject and a verb. So an example is we all went out for pizza. That's a complete, it's an independent clause, it stands on its own. A dependent clause is a group of words that cannot stand on its own or an incomplete thought. So, for example, after the game. So that would be an independent, this is a dependent clause. This isn't able to stand on its own. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go through a quick, we're just going to identify independent and dependent clauses in the sentence. So what I would like for you to do is I want you to figure out in sentence one, what is the independent clause, what is the dependent clause? Uh, very, in sentence two, figure out what is the independent clause, what is the dependent clause. And in sentence three, what is the independent clause, what is the dependent clause. Sentence four, what is the independent clause, what is the dependent clause. Sentence five, what is the independent clause, what's the dependent clause. All right, now that we've gone through and done that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at creating compound sentences. So compound sentences, when you have two independent clauses together. So again, remember, independent clauses, they can stand on their own. So, for example, Miss Schertzinger loves dogs and she loves cats. Miss Schertzinger loves dogs is an independent clause. She loves cats is an independent clause. You bind these two things together, and this is a compound sentence. So there's two ways you can do this and combine them together. You can join clauses with either a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon. So, for example, the child ran away, he was found later, semicolon right there. Or, the child ran away, comma, but he was found later. Again, this is a comma in conjunction here. So, what I want you to do here is I want you to make each sentence a compound sentence by finishing the thought. I'm going to show you an example for number one. You're going to do the other ones here. Oh. So, it's her brother was her best friend. So, that means what I need to do is I need to join us with a second um, independent thought. There's two ways I can do it. You can put a semicolon. And then I can put something together. So I could say, whether it was her best friend, he was in the Marines. Or I could put, and he was in the Marines with a comma and conjunction right there. So I want you guys to go ahead and do this. Number two, the dog ran away from home. How would you finish off this sentence here to make it a compound sentence with a complete thought? Make sure you have the correct punctuation in there too. Number three. So the second part says the doctor said she would not survive. How would you start off this sentence with a complete thought, an independent clause? And make sure you have the correct uh, punctuation here as well. Four, it says Gatsby through elaborate parties. How would you start this off with an independent clause? What punctuation would you use? Number five, I want you to write a compound sentence about Gatsby and Daisy's relationship. Make sure you're using commas and conjunctions or a semicolon there. All right, guys, this next part is creating complex sentence. So a complex sentence is an independent and a dependent clause go together. So for example, despite her best efforts, Ms. Schertzinger failed the exam. Ms. Schertzinger failed the exam is an independent clause. Despite her best efforts is a dependent clause. So if the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, you use the comma to separate the two. So it says wherever you go, you will have friends. All right, so if it comes beforehand, the dependent clause comes for the independent clause, then you use a comma to separate them. Remember, this is like a transitional phrase that's right here. So let's practice. Um, you're going to write an independent clause to complete each complex sentence. So again, this is just independent clauses you're writing. So for example, it says, wherever you go, and you would answer this, wherever you go, you will have friends. So let's go ahead and do this in number one. Since I am hungry, finish this out with a com uh, or an independent thought. Number two, although I'm late, finish this out with an independent thought. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go on and you're going to write a dependent clause to complete each complex sentence. Use the connecting words if you need to. So after, when, because, or since. You can do that. So for example, up here it says he was still friends with them, but it says answer after 20 years. That's what you put here. He was still friends with them. So number six, go ahead and write a dependent clause to start off here. Where it ends, it says we will have to go home. Number seven, please write a dependent clause here and finish off the independent clauses. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead now and test your knowledge, and we're going to see how you did with this. So it says, ice cubes begin to form in the water. Uh, in the water freezes. It causes uh, molecules to bond into a square shape. Oh, sorry, it says ice cubes begin to form um, when, ice cubes form when water in the, 
sorry, that should say. I was like, what is going on with this? Blend the water in the jar. There you go. Freezes. It causes molecules to bond into square shape. So looking at it here, should it be freezes causing, freezes comma it causes, or freezes this causes? Go ahead and figure out how you would like uh, to answer this question. What's the correct punctuation here? I guess the best interest of this one is B as in boy. So it says freezes, comma, causing the water and the molecules to form in default shapes. The reason why, guys, is that what you have here is that you have two independent clauses the way that it's set up. And so you could put a comma and a conjunction, but there are no answer choices that say that. So the best answer choice here is to change this from freezes to freezing, making this a dependent clause and making this right here an independent clause. Number two, all the balls appear to have an oblong shape. They actually have a cross-stitch pattern. How would you want to answer this question? The answer for this one, guys, is B as in boy. If this is a dependent clause, then this is an independent clause. You have a comma after that one. Three, the greater the pressure from the wind causes a disturbance in the atmosphere. So how would you want to answer this one? This one, guys, for this is going to be D as in dog right here. Again, um, the greater the pressure from the wind causes the disturbance. These are two dependent clauses, and so they should not be separated with a comma. Question number four. Wrapped up in wool sweaters and thick coats, and we watched the football game late last night. What do you think the best answer choice for this one is here? All right, guys. So what you would answer for this one here, it would be C. This wrapped up in wool sweaters and thick coats is a dependent clause. We watched the blogging in a sense of independent clause, so you'd have a comma to separate the two of them.